Um, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for your patience, councillors. Um, I obviously wanted to see the Divine family um, settled and uh, having a drink in the, in the room. Um, and so that's why I've been a little bit of a delay. So I apologise for that. Um, so thank you, councillors, and welcome to our extraordinary council meeting this evening. May I also extend a warm welcome to members of the public who are watching on their podcasts. Uh, moving to item number one, declarations of interest. Members are asked to consider whether they, um, whether you have any disclosable pecuniary and or any other relevant interest in connection with any matters to be determined at this meeting. And if so, I to declare it and state the nature of, of such interest. Please indicate uh, now if you wish to declare any interests. Oh, lovely. Uh, uh, Mayor's announcement, I have uh, received apologies from councillors Clements, Cox, Johnson, Greeny, Ozenlu, and the and Gleaves, Spriggs and Frost. So we take them as recorded. Uh, and then we move to the whole council elections. Members, we are asked to consider a report of the returning officer in respect of a proposed change to the current electoral cycle from elections by thirds to whole council elections. I would like to invite Councillor Williamson to move the recommendations detailed in the report. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, and I would like to ask Councillor Tom Anderson to second. So seconded, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, so the proposal of the motion, Councillor Williamson, do you wish to speak to this item? If so, you now have to five minutes. Mr Mayor, I don't really have anything to say to it, thanks. Okay. Um, debate. Are there any speakers? Mr Gilchrist? Councillor Gilchrist, I should say. Hi. Sorry, Phil. You're welcome, Mr Mayor. People have been waiting. I'm doing well to pick it. Gilchrist for 40 odd years, but that is in the hands of the electorate. Um, Mr. Mayor, and that's the issue, isn't it? That our fate is in the hands of the electorate, the people who put us here in the first place. And this proposal is effectively to cease having elections in a number of years' time and have a gap between elections. As is my want, I went back to the documentation that we were recommended to read, and I went back to the Electoral Commission report for 2003-04. And it said uh, that there was a strong case for simplification of the current arrangements. It said that there was a balance of evidence that whole council elections were more likely to provide clarity for electors and a degree of stability for local authorities. And they did go on, to be fair to them, to recommend this gap, this process. And they did short a time when all the metropolitan authorities all did their elections just as we do. And they set out the arguments in their report, both sides. They said supporters of partial elections allow, argue that electing half or a third of the party's members in rotation can help ensure that the composition of the council better reflects the political complexion of the electorate and that more frequent elections can provide sharper accountability by keeping representatives on their toes. That was one of the reasons they argued for retaining things as they are. But the other aspect in their report was that opponents of whole council elections expressed the concern that important but controversial decisions may be postponed for political reasons until after an election, giving electors no opportunity for democratic protest for three years. So those were the considerations that were looked at pretty well 20 years ago. And they're exactly the considerations that we have in mind now. What way will the electorate look at our actions in future years, and how will they affect or influence what we do? Might we be 
meeting a path to my door or any one of our doors or sending us emails, writing to us, meeting us in the shops, wherever it is. But there might not be elections for them. So the answer we need to look at now is what are the people who do go to vote going to think of this move? The 87,000 or so who voted in 2019 and the 85,000 or so in 2021. They are the people who are being overlooked by this move. They are abandoned, having their votes taken away from them, the opportunity to register their support for one party or any other party. That's being taken away by this move. And for that extent, it is not, as dem not democratic. And it is being done in response to a report, which we'll probably touch on again. But whilst I've read the report from DLUC, I don't well, accept that's the answer. Thank, thank you. you. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, but I can't let Councillor Gilchrist get away with that, quite, quite frankly. Um, throughout this fairly horrendous period, in terms of not having enough money to provide the services and having to go for a loan and a capitalisation, uh, we are under scrutiny. We are under scrutiny. Uh, we took that choice. Uh, the Gold Party supported going for, for, for the loan. You borrow money off someone, they want to see how you're running your operation. But Throughout the response to that, Councillor Gilchrist, firstly at a, a meeting I see, voted against supporting the report or even acknowledging the report uh, and supporting some of the recommendations. He then went on to virtually encourage us to not set a budget, in fact break the law, illegally set an illegal budget. If we'd have all voted the same way as the Dems the other night, we would not have a budget in place. And we, we, wouldn't, we would not be here, the commissioners would be in. So we can play fast and loose, but clearly one of the recommendations in the report was the all-out elections. And I'm not in favour of all-out elections. I, I, I don't particularly like them. I think it's, a, it, it's slightly confusing for the electors. But that was also part of that report. And we have to say, if someone is telling you to do something and you need to do it, you can do it. And it might be something that works out for us in the future. The one saving grace from it, I read from the report, we did consult, not a great deal of people got involved in the consultation, but there is a result from the consultation. When you shake your head, Dave, but you say when consultation goes out, you, you, you say you must listen to it. Well, if there's a, anything to listen to, there's one result on the table. Might not be a great, great result for all of us, but it's 60% in favour of all out elections, which again, we have to take recognition of. And, there is a slight bonus in terms of the report that there is a financial saving to be made throughout that process. So it's probably with a heavy heart and with some reluctance that we will all, uh, I feel sorry for those poor people who are going up for election this year, only to, if they want to come back, come back for election next year. We will have all outs. Uh, we will put our cases to the people. It will be a fair result and we will work with that constitution as it goes on. But to endanger, first at points in, in the, we endangered the capitalisation loan, and the Lib Dems did so. Then they go on to tell us, I think they really need, well, Councillor Gilchrist needs to look at his position as chair of the Constitutional Committee. Because I'm going to find it very difficult for him to lecture me from the chair at a Constitutional Standards Committee when he voted for illegal budgets. Councillor Baird, please. Thank you. Of course, nobody voted for illegal budgets at the last council meeting. Every proposal that was put forward was perfectly legal. Um, not that much of a but that doesn't seem to be accepted by any right honourable members of the British Club, or whatever his name is. <laughs> anyway, on the matter before us, um, the, on, on elections, this is a very important issue about democracy. The, um, it says there's no direct equality implications of this report, but there are actually, because this proposal affects young people very directly, those who become 18 after May 2023. And all parties, apart from the Conservatives, have a policy of votes at 16. 
young people at that stage are old enough to go to work, to join a trade union, join a political party, to serve in the army, to become parents, to pay taxes. They're old enough to vote in Scotland and in Wales. But this proposal on Wirral would remove that vote of disenfranchised young people, um, thousands of young people on the Wirral, some of whom will turn 22, will be 22 years old before they can vote in local elections to elect their local councillors. And we would all be poorer for not even asking for their views or asking for their votes. So I'll probably be voting against this proposal. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Fox is right here in one point. There is a modest saving to be made by moving to uh, having elections every four years. There is, of course, an even greater saving to be made if we dispense with elections altogether. Uh, because the, the, the issue that's at stake here is the fundamental one of democracy. Um, we had a, a consultation, as Councillor uh, Fouts rightly said. Uh, we've got a third of a million people living in Wirral. Uh, of those, 321 came out in support of this proposal, which is a derisory figure. Uh, in our own ward in, in Oxton, we made some attempt to engage with uh, residents over this proposal. And it's quite interesting, when you look at the breakdown of figures of voting from ward by ward, Oxton was streets ahead of every other ward in the borough. And within Oxton, residents voted two to one against having all up elections. As I say, it, it's a question of democracy. There are people in the world at the moment fighting for the right for self-determination and democratic accountability. And obviously the, the issue of single year elections or every four years is not on, on that scale, but this is the principle that we stand on the idea that we are accountable to our electors. We're not afraid of going to them uh, and seeking a new mandate on a regular basis. We want people to be engaged in the democratic process and not cut off from it. Um, and I find it very disappointing that we've got both the major parties I'm afraid of outside observers uh, and for, for, uh, proposing to a system they don't really agree with. And if we disagree with something, you know, we still have the right of dissent in this country. And I'm very proud to, to stand up for that and argue that we have a system that works well. Um, it is one that's been tried and tested ever since the Borough of Wirral was formed in, in the early 1970s. And I can see no adequate reason for changing it. There's this argument about stability. Well, given the, democratic, uh, the demographics of Wirral, the, the, the chances are that the instable, unstable um, makeup of the council is going to be perpetuated in an all-up election. And if it were not perpetuated, then we were going to have a, a complete change of authority um, and we're going to have a, a swathe of new, inexperienced councillors elected, uh, and that is hardly going to offer greater stability. The system we have works, there is no need to change it, Mr Mayor. Councillor Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wasn't really going to speak on this debate, but uh, the comments from Councillor Fowkes really does wild me. I mean, he's constantly going on, and I must say, lying about comments. He said the Liberal Democrats, the Liberal Democrats voted for an illegal budget. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Excuse Mayor, me. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, please. I'd have sit to down, Dave. That remark. Just sit, sit down. I don't want to be standing up. Dave, just sit down a second, please. This meeting is not going to deteriorate. I'm not going to allow it to speak with dignity to each other. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I shall uh, retract that slightly because Councillor Fowl constantly comes out with the same platitudes and wrong comments about the Liberal Democrats saying we voted to break the law, we voted against uh, proposing budgets which are illegal. We've never ever done that. And it, it's a thing that riled me at the budget process and it was the way the process was done on the evening because the director of finance was asked at the end of the meeting 
not at the beginning of the meeting, but at the end of the meeting, were all these amendments legal? And the answer was yes. So everything the Liberal Democrats have proposed on this council have been 100% legal. And I wish Councillor Faust to remove those remarks that keeps on saying that we broke the law. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next, we have uh, Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it clearly became apparent, I think, that Councillor uh, Fouts made his contribution, and a way of Liberal Democrats jumped to their feet in defence of, of our leader and, and our position. As you call me, and I have a few minutes, I'll, I'll try and put them to some use that, uh, that doesn't repeat what has already been said so eloquently in defence um, of that position by uh, Councillor Mitchell and Councillor <coughs> Graham. Uh, let me start, though, by congratulating Councillor Martin on his maiden speech in a, um, in a previous debate. I, I, I was listening to that. And if I may, uh, with Councillor's indulgence, just uh, comment on the exceptional speech given by Councillor Cosby, also in a, um, in a previous debate. I guess, Mr Mayor, that's the sort of speech um, that you're after um, in, in, uh, in this chamber, one that's factual and one that's... Um, uh, and, and one that we can listen to with, with respect. I'll try to be kind to Councillor uh, Fouts, and I'll just say, possibly over the pudding there, um, we didn't vote for any uh, illegal uh, budgets, all our amendments were, were legal and in place. Councillor Fouts knows from experience what does happen when a council fails to set a budget. We lock the doors and they keep us here until we reach agreement. That's the uh, way balanced councils work. work. We worked on when uh, Steve was leader of the council and I was leader of my group and eventually we come to uh, an agreement um, uh, and uh, a budget is passed. Didn't need that at the last council meeting because the agreement was already um, in place. Mr Mayor, if I may agree with council folks, it is quite difficult to reach a conclusion uh, based on the, um, on the poor turnout on the consultation. We know as Lib Dems are talking about electoral systems and elections and election cycles, it doesn't quite set the world on fire. We know that from uh, past experience. But it is actually the case, as was pointed out, that the people I represent in Oxford, when we asked them specifically, actually came out 66% against the idea of all up elections. And those people, they deserve a voice and they deserve a vote in this chamber. I appreciate it will be difficult for the members where their wards have not broken in exactly that direction, they may, like, I was like the Brexit well, uh, um, referendum, isn't it? Well, a member of Parliament may very well have been uh, on one side of the Fed, so needs to find their constituent vote in a completely different way. I'm pleased that uh, the residents in, in Oxford uh, start, have stood up for a democratic principle of, of elections uh, continuing in thirds, they're quite like holding us to account uh, in Oxford, and I'm happy to continue to represent them and their views in the way that they would want me to. That's why I won't be supporting that recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Burgess, choice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I know I probably always say this, but I, I wasn't intending to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really wasn't. Honestly, I really wasn't. Um, I have to be honest, Mr. Mayor, um, when, when I first was aware about the All Outs, I, you know, I, I'll be honest, I had some reservations. You know, in my head, I did worry that, you know, come January, normally a third of us start to panic a little bit about, you know, what's going to happen in May, and as a result, um, the other two thirds tend to just get on with the day job. We're now going to be in a position whereby in January, we're all going to be considering what we're going to be doing in May. But the more I think about it, the more I actually, and this is going to come as a real shock to people in the room, I tend to agree with Councillor Fuchs, which, you know, uh, will be the one and only time probably. But uh, in fairness, I do, I do agree. And the reason why I'm standing now is because I actually really like the Liberals. I think they're lovely, lovely people. But seriously, to be lectured about democracy by Liberals who try to overturn a national referendum in 2016, I find staggering. So I'm afraid, I do apologise for using the B word, but that is why I find it quite disingenuous, Mr Mayor, to hear the Liberals battling on 
about this being unfair and undemocratic. None of us are particularly happy about it, but I'm afraid it will be a case of us supporting this because it's, it's the right thing to do. So, Councillor Fuchs, make a note in your diary. I've actually agreed with you for the first time in years. Thank you, Mr. James. <laughs> <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, unlike Councillor Birch's choice, I wasn't intended on speaking tonight. Um, but the hypocrisy from some members here this evening uh, commented. Yes, Councillor Mitchell, thank you. Um, it's, it's just, it's stark. Councillor Baird and the Lib Dems references that no one voted for an illegal budget was voting against the legal budget without a credible alternative. What was that? Your amendments lost. Yeah. I think Councillor Baird even admitted on the night that most of her amendment wasn't allowed by the Section 151 officer, so therefore that made them illegal. So, you know, so the hypocrisy there with, with the comments that are being made, you voted against setting the legal budget. That's, that's the reality here. Councillor Baird has always been an advocate for uh, democracy, and given that she was not elected as an independent councillor, I would have thought that she would have welcomed an election to give her the mandate that she believes that she has. After all, that is what she has um, hollered across the chamber to other independent councillors that went independent. So I would have thought that she would have welcomed that. No one wants fallouts. I don't think there's a member in here that would advocate for that. But we are where we are because of the independent reports. And if it doesn't happen, if we don't vote for it tonight, whether it's a majority, whether we all vote against it, we only have to look over the water to see what will happen. It will be imposed on us. So we can either take the moral high ground and actually go with this and take the bull by the horns or have it thrust upon us and at a time not of our choosing. So I will be supporting it on those grounds. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll make a few comments based on what's been said already. Um, clearly, there are pros and cons about these systems. You know, they've been they've been stated tonight, and you know, the, the, there's no there's no perfect answer to this kind of election conundrum. Giving people a voice is very very important, but if you're going to design a system from scratch, would you design three out of four years? You probably wouldn't. Whether you'd go for every four years, I'm not sure you'd do that either. Maybe every other year would be a good compromise, but that's not what we've been offered. I think one, one thing that hasn't been said really is this kind of, what, what we're being asked to do, told to do, yeah, let's get it right, we're being told to do this. What we're being told to do is, is part of a wider agenda from the Conservative government. They do have a contempt really for fair democracy. You know, they're changing the rules around elections to make them all first past the post. As if first past the post wasn't bad enough, every election now is going to be first past the post. The only country in Europe, apart from Belarus, that uses first past the post. Voter registration, another kind of thing that isn't required, isn't needed, and is going to help the Conservatives in future years. So this kind of fits into that agenda. You know, we've been told to do this, and it's the fact that we've been told to do it. You know, we're not actually been consulted, asked, you know, there isn't a kind of a national debate about it, you know, we're just being told to do which is part of a, a wider agenda. Um, so it's, it's kind of a form of bullying, and unfortunately some of the comments we've heard earlier feed into that kind of narrative, you know, like this nonsense about the legal budget and all the rest of that, you know, it's just, it's just part of that narrative, and really it's, it's something I find objectionable. Uh, so we are being bullied. I think there was one important comment earlier about equalities. Young people voting, you know, we know how hard it is sometimes to get young people to vote, uh, and credit to, to Scotland for giving people votes at 16. And yes, that is the policy of most of the parties represented here, and has been Green Party policy for many, many years. And that is definitely a negative uh, as part of this. But having weighed it all up, 
having weighed it all up, the pros and the cons, etc., etc. I am going to support this uh, with a heavy heart, I must say. Uh, and I, I'd support it a lot easier if we weren't being bullied into it. But weighing it all up, I will be back in motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Steve, 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 can I just say, your house spoke once, right, you're not entitled to speak again anymore. But if you wish to rescind anything you want to say to someone where we were before, that's a different thing. Also. Well, okay, in, re in rescinding my comments in which oh, no, I think, I'm I think I... think I'm asking, that's all. What, okay, I'll just clarify. What I said was... Had we have followed the Lib Dem lead and the Greens and Independent Councillor Joe Baird's lead, we would have ended up that night not setting a legal budget. That is fact. It's not lies or anything. Then uh, we heard comments then we'd be okay. What would the commissioners and, and the people overseeing us see us that we fell at the first hurdle and not being able to set a legal budget? Forget democracy, there wouldn't be any democracy. The commissioners would be in right now. So please behave yourself and stop playing politics with people's lives. No, this, sorry, yeah, I'm moving now to seconders. Sorry, Councillor Rennie, you wish to speak. Sorry, Leslie, didn't see. I honestly wasn't uh, going to speak tonight, but what I've heard from the minority parties here and the so-called independent, independent member now, it, it just fills me with horror. I don't know, you know, you sat in on the budget meetings, the Liberal Democrats, the Greens, you sat in with us, you were party to all the debate that went on there and there was a way forward for this council. This council has been a mess for years and we now have a team of officers and I think uh, with some exceptions and probably that those colleagues of that then there are probably the exceptions, that we have a real chance now of putting this borough really at the forefront on the map of Great Britain. We have a fantastic regeneration programme before us now. Yeah, it, it, it's in your ward, it's in your ward, Councillor, Councillor Cleary. Are you really trying to tell us that you don't think we are on the cusp of real change within this borough? And the most important thing that the commissioners and those outside bodies have said when they've come and looked at Wirral is that we should all be working together. This is not helpful in one iota at all, but the way that you, you, you're behaving, the way that you're, uh, the colleagues from the Liberal Democrats are, are behaving, and clearly, Councillor Bird, I must not forget you, you have been elected on a Labour ticket, and you're trying to lecture this council about democracy. You're now independent. I do hope, <coughs> excuse me, I do hope that you're going to reflect on that and perhaps put yourself forward for election again as an independent member. Yes, you might be putting a hand over your mouth because you're yawning and you find it boring, because clearly I'm not the first one to remind you of it. But, you know, I've found in all the years I've been on this council, not very often I've agreed with Steve Fowles, but I do agree with him here tonight, because if there's any danger at all of councillors not working together, then our whole future for Wirral could be thwarted, and I think that's a real shame. And, you know, Councillor Cleary, what's wrong with the system of voting first past the post? Is it not fair that the person with the most number of votes wins? I think it is. I've got no further speakers, so I'm going to bring in uh, Councillor Tom Anderson. Uh, do you wish to speak to this item? And if so, you now have up to three minutes. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I really wasn't going to speak tonight. I thought this would go quite easy without <laughs> incident. A bit, like, a bit, bit like the leader, but I have to say, I've never heard self-indulgent quite shot from the Lib Dems. I really haven't. Talking about democracy, you're all elected once every four years. You're not elected every year. You put yourself up for election. Do it. There's a lot more important items on the agenda tonight to take this time off, such as the local plan and the regeneration programme. To just talk about self-indulgence. Oh, we don't agree. Talk about bullying. No, it's not bullying, Councillor Cleary. What it is is a government who's been democratically elected talking about going to an all-out all election. I might not like it, but that's the condition that we're in because of the capitalisation <coughs> directive, because we failed to balance the budget for the last 10 years. 
and we've just used one-offs. So that's where we are. If you don't like it, why don't you get yourself elected to Parliament and then change the law? That's the way to do it. Not piddle around in a local right. council moaning about it like we're all MPs. We're not. We're here to serve the residents of Wirral locally on, on the issues that matter to them that's in our remit and in our power. And going on and moaning about all our elections or thirds is just self-serving. It's happening and I'm glad you've actually had the last minute conversion and got on board and I do respect that and your group for doing that. I genuinely do. Liberal Democrat, Councillor Gilchrist, I have to say, shame on you. You sat in a PR meeting and voted for that budget and then suddenly your whole group put your hand up and vote against setting a legal budget. I think what Council Facts was getting to. <coughs> yes, you did. You lost your moment, so you took your bat and ball home and well, we're not together. And what you're going to do, you're going to sit in the leaders' meetings next week, you're going to sit in the finance subcommittees next week, having your say, one foot in the tent but not out. Go to your residents of Oxton and Eastham with a we're all independent, we'll do what we like. No, we're in this together mess. The, the independent reports and we're clear and we have to work together to sort it out. That's a responsible thing to do and that's what your group should do. Okay. Um, so, proposer of the motion, Councillor Williamson, do you wish to exercise your right of reply? And if you do, you have up to three minutes. <laughs> to be honest, when I moved the motion and said I didn't intend to speak, I was hoping that was kind of going to be, you know, uh, how it would go. Uh, okay. Well, firstly, I'm not going to rehash the budget. Um, it's all been said. And I want to thank Councillor Cleary actually for his comments. And I am in agreement that this has been imposed on us against our wishes. And I do thank you for supporting it. I know it's a difficult one. Uh, Councillor Gilchrist, I just don't know where you're coming from. I really don't. And actually what you're doing is damaging relations between the groups. You've done it twice now. You've done it with the budget and you've done it with this. And it makes it incredibly difficult for us all to work together when you're consistently voting against what we have to do uh, on such big items like the budget and this. I don't understand. Um, it seems to me that no matter what system we have, you're not going to step up and do the difficult things, whether we go to all outs, which is what you're opposed to, or we stay on thirds, because you still you haven't stepped up this year and done those difficult things. And we're currently on thirds elections, so I don't know. I just feel that I'm disappointed, really, that you've taken this stance tonight and that your group are going to vote against. Uh, I, I have said openly I want us to go forward and work together. I do believe it's the only way that this borough will thrive and grow, um, is by working together, but you're making it incredibly difficult, Phil. You really are. And so that, that's all I have to say on that, Mr Mayor. I think reluctantly supporting this, well, reluctantly voting for it, I wouldn't say supporting it, but reluctantly voting for it, yeah. There being no further comments, we will move to the vote. All those in favour, please show. Those against? Abstentions? Mr Mayor, that motion was carried. There were 50 votes in favour, seven votes against and one abstention.
Sorry. Yeah, that, that is passed. Thank you. And that's the second part of the meeting for tonight. Uh, so we move straight away into...